Common released the album Like Water for Chocolate in 2000. Then in 2002 came the album Electric Circus, which was not very well received critically or commercially. It's a much more experimental mix of psychedelic rock, electronic, hip hop, and neo soul. After the Soulquarians era sort of fizzled out, Common had to figure out what to do next. So today I'm breaking down his next album, 2005's B, the production, getting into the amazing 70s soul samples, the multiple sampling methods used by two legendary producers, talking with Derek Hodge, the bass player who played the now famous intro to the album. What people don't know yeah. about B is there was a whole string section in the room <laughs> Oh, really? as I was recording that. And seeing how this is the perfect comeback album. To start, let's do a quick Soulquarians review. The Soulquarians were a collective of musicians and artists, starting first with Questlove, D'Angelo, James Poyser, and Jay Dilla, and expanding out to encompass Erica Badu, Common, Bilal, Most Def, Talib Kweli, and more. For a few years in the late 90s, they essentially took over Electric Lady Studios in New York, producing classic albums like Erica's Mama's Gun, Things Fall Apart by The Roots, Voodoo by D'Angelo, and Like Water for Chocolate by Common. By the way, if those albums get you excited, you'll want to check out my series on the Soulquarians. I go much more in depth on all of those albums, how they were made, and why they're so incredible. But for now, for this story, here's what you need to know. The Soulquarians started with kind of a summer camp vibe. Questlove and D'Angelo would listen and study some of their favorite records to try to figure out what made them so great. Stuff like Stevie Wonder, Prince, and Marvin Gaye. This is why the genre is called Neo Soul. They're reaching back into the past for inspiration and making a new, updated version of the stuff they love. A spoiler alert, 70 soul samples, that's where we're going. After the infamous Vibe magazine shoot with the Soulquarians, the collective started to go their separate ways, but in 2002, Common released Electric Circus, which was produced by Questlove, Dilla, James Poyser, and more. There are other releases by The Roots, Erica, and others during this time, but the close of the Soulquarians era does have a specific date. September 18th, 2004. But let's dive into the music first. I'll leave that cliffhanger there where it's at. We'll come back in a minute. Let's start actually with the second song. I do want to talk about the intro. That's common. I'm just full of cliffhangers today. Let's talk about the corner. This song features The Last Poets, which, uh, how much time do we have? The Last Poets predate hip hop and are forefathers of it in many respects. Their first public performance was in 1968 on the birthday of Malcolm X, who was killed three years earlier. Their self-titled debut album was released in 1970 and features powerful poetry over conga beats. The Last Poets have been sampled or quoted many times in hip hop by artists like N.W.A., Tribe, or Public Enemy, but this song, Common the Corner is their first non-sampled feature. But speaking of samples, all through this album, there's just gorgeous 70s soul samples. This song is no exception. You know, let me change my setup really fast because I need different equipment. The drum sample comes from the 1972 Temptation song, What It Is. So this yellow track up here, this is the original song, but then this is the drum section, so I've copied that down here, sped it up a little bit to match the corner. But then let's take a listen to this. There's a lot of extra vocal noise in there. So my best guess is that these chops right here, we got a good kick, we got a good snare. I've copied these down to the red track here, rearranged them a little bit. And then to isolate it even further, if we say we just wanna hear the right side and not the left, now check it out. So that rah, 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 I've always heard that and wondered what that was. And that's just as best as you can get it isolated. There's a little bit of vocal fragment in there, but gives a character. The other sample is from 1973, You Make the Sun Shine by The Tempries. Check us out. Much slower, but if we speed and pitch that up to match our drums, here's the end result. Oh, no. 
There's additional production on this as well, like bass and that very last sample there. I can't quite figure out what that is, but I just love seeing all throughout this album how these lush samples can be chopped in different ways. They could be combined with other samples or layered with live instrumentation. And wait till we get to the Dilma song, he does something even crazier. If you're looking for great 70s soul records like this to sample in your own productions, I suggest using Traglib. It's a great service and they're sponsoring this video, so let me cook something up real fast. Traglib is an online record store specifically for samples. It's got a huge catalog, like 80,000 songs and growing. It's crazy, and there's a 100% guarantee of fast, easy, affordable clearance. So just scrolling through here, they've got, oh shoot, Bobby Caldwell, Isaac Hayes. This is not a bit for the sponsor. I didn't know they had this. I'm gonna search for some 70s soul. I love this one right here. Can't Stop Loving You by Soul Dog, 1976. What's cool is in the browser, I can kind of audition this. So I can do like, let's say a two bar loop. I can add a beat with it. I can pitch it. I already know what I'm gonna do. All right, I'm gonna use one of my credits and download it. I'm gonna keep working on it, but when I'm ready to release it, Tracklib makes it super easy. Everything in the library is guaranteed for a fast, affordable clearance. To get started yourself, click the link in the description. You'll get 15 tracks to download for free, plus a 30-day trial, which is double the typical trial. So, right, September 18th, 2004, the death of the Soquarians. It sounds really intense, but it's the day that Dave Chappelle threw a block party in Brooklyn for his documentary concert film titled, uh, appropriately, Dave Chappelle's Block Party. The house band was The Roots. Common performed, Erica performed, Jill Scott, Most Deaf and Talib Kweli, Dead Prez, The Fugees. It's insane. But there was one other artist, an up and comer who wasn't affiliated with the Soulquarians. He was a new guy. He had just released his debut album and he was starting to make waves. As Questlove recalled, at the time we were shooting Dave Chappelle's block party, I knew that it was the last time the Electric Eight were going to be together. Most Common, Bilal, D'Angelo, Erica, James Poyser, Jay Dilla, and me. I knew that was our funeral. I knew that the next renaissance wasn't going to be Roots-centric. Seeing Kanye with the marching band from that movie, I knew I wasn't going to be central to the next movement anymore. He was going to be the leader, and I would have to be fine with it. It seems like Quest wasn't the only one who realized Kanye was going to be the next big thing because Common's next album, B, was released on Kanye's new label, Good Music, which stands for Getting Out Our Dreams. The first Good Music release was John Legend's debut album, Get Lifted. The second was Common's, B, and the third was Kanye's late registration. All right, let's talk about the opening title track, B, this iconic bass line, and why it's so good. Good. Common has described this intro as like a prayer or an invocation opening the album, showing what it's about to be and where he's gonna go. I didn't do that on purpose, I swear. Be and go. I love it. You think he's gonna go to the corner? Testify? Find out what love is? All right, let's keep going. Like I said, this album has a bunch of different 70s soul samples with it, but varying techniques. What I love about this opening track, B, is that it sounds like it's a soul sample, but it's not quite. It's re-recorded by live musicians, but it's not even a direct interpolation. Let me show you what I mean. The original sample is Mother Nature by Albert Jones from 1977, which is this. But what's happening is the live instrumentation is essentially separating out the parts from the original record and building it up from there. So, for instance, if I isolate the bass on this track... This is the line we hear the upright bass play to open the album. But by moving this line to the beginning, it's rearranging the elements of the sample and also livening it up even more because it's live musicians. And that upright bass sound evokes stuff like A Tribe Called Quest, who sampled upright bass on many songs, but combined with those strings, which is actually a live string section, it's so good. This opening bass line intro has since become famous, and I recently spoke with the man who played it, Derek Hodge. That was, that was such a unique time for me, man. And even where we recorded it, man, in the legendary Columbia Sony spot up in New York. The thing about moments at that studio, it was always about just capturing something honest, you know, in the moment, yeah. not, you know, showing up, like being too like, okay, let me be this version of myself that I think everybody wants. You know, it always felt like yeah. when doing sessions in New York, like, let me just 
be free, be me, document any moment in the day. And yeah. B, what made that so cool is my brother Common and love to Kanye, man. They're like they were, they were so understanding of that and open to that. You know, what people don't know yeah. about B is there was a whole string section in the room. <laughs> oh, really? As I was recording that, you know, and oh, it wasn't wow. originally going to be what it ended up being. Like I was showing, I had this whole string thing written out, and I'm because I couldn't see the string players. You know, I'm kind of mimicking the phrases so that they could kind yeah. of feel it instead of having to worry about the pulse of the metronome too much. And as I'm playing the notes and talking, you know, uh, Common and Kanye, they was like, yo, what about that? You know what I mean? So I just literally just started playing free, just the vibe of what I'd already kind of written out as an intro. Yeah. And then that Before ended you get up into being, the main line. Yeah. And then that yeah. ended up being it. And then we ended up using the strings for the main part later da, 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 da. but then the yeah. first part ended up being just just what it is and at the moment you don't always all the way get to understand context like hey this is going to yeah. be the opening of the album you know and then this is going to be a thing that kind of ends up being a moment you know for your career yeah. in the moment i was just literally as they say b i was being in the moment and being free and that yeah. album in particular is so special because Everything about that process was about honesty and I much love to my bro Common and Kanye for just trusting that. Like, I didn't know they were going to yeah. let that out, me start the album like that, you know, especially yeah. since it was a big album for Common, you know, and they were investing in it. So the fact that they were willing to let that speak that way, I think about them both in that way to this day. Yeah. By the way, you can catch my whole conversation with Derek Hodge on the Digging the Greats podcast or on the YouTube channel, Digging the Talks. Derek is an incredible musician, bassist, and arranger who's worked with people like Robert Glasper, Jill Scott, Q-Tip. He conducted the Juneteenth celebration at the Hollywood Bowl last year, and so many, many more. This conversation was incredible. Go listen to the full thing on the Digging the Talks YouTube or the Digging the Greats podcast. This iconic baseline is just the tip of the iceberg, not only for Derek, but for this common album as well. It's an incredibly distinct way to open the album. That gorgeous upright bass, the soulful strings. Common's giving his opening to the album. It's different from Electric Circus for sure, but it's also different from the Soulquarian stuff. Kanye produced all but two tracks on this album, the other two being produced by J. Dillon who we're gonna talk about in just a minute. But that upright bass and those soulful strings, it's just so good, so warm. Though Kanye would later say that running a record label was the biggest mistake he ever made, there are a ton of great releases from the label and these first few good music albums in particular are fantastic. It's John Legend's debut album or Common's comeback album after Electric Circus. It's paired with a young and hungry Kanye who's fresh off the success of the college dropout and he's acting as a producer for these other artists. Common had been loosely associated with the native tongues in their later era, having appeared on De La Soul's 96 album, Stakes is High. He was of course in the center of the Soulquarians and now he was starting to be part of a new scene, good music. For Common, after the disappointment of Electric Circus, he needed a reset and regroup. And Kanye provided exactly that. As Common said about him, he loves the Tribe Called Quests and the Pete Rocks, the DJ Premier and Gangstar stuff. That's probably his home too. But he's been blessed to do other sounding music also. I did challenge him to grow as a producer. He challenged me to grow as an artist, as an MC. Listening to this album, it feels like Common and Kanye are doing the same thing the Soulquarians did. Studying their favorite records, figuring out what made them so great, and making a new version of that. Except instead of Stevie Wonder or Marvin Gaye, it was Tribe or Pete Rock or Premier digging into their music and their inspirations, which actually in at least one case we'll see in a second, actually was Marvin Gaye as well. But take the song Go. The sample on this is Old Smokey by Linda Lewis from 1972. It's combined with Kanye's drum. A track on scratches, Kanye singing the hook, but who's singing the word go? John Mayer. Shortest feature maybe ever. How easy was that recording session? Do I have a mic? Gotta have a mic for this bit. Go! All right, John, we got it. Thanks for coming in. For real though, this song came out of Common, Kanye, and John Mayer all hanging out. John and Kanye came up with that hook, and the rest is history. But remember how I mentioned Dilla? At this time, Common and Dilla were roommates, and while Dilla produced two songs on the album, Common asked him to do a remix of Go, and what he came back with was this. This is sped up slightly for where I'm going, but the sample here is the song Don't Say Goodnight by the Isley Brothers, and if this had been the remix, it would sound like this. 
go, 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 and on the count of three, go, 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 and on the count of three, go, 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 uh, on the count of three, everybody run back to your fantasy. Instead, a shorter, slightly different version of this beat called Bye first appeared on Dilla's 2006 album Donuts. Rest in peace, Dilla. Then an expanded version on The Shining called So Far To Go featuring Common and D'Angelo singing as well. Yet another shorter version of So Far To Go was featured on Common's next album, Finding Forever. So what started as a remix to go ended up as So Far To Go. Speaking of Jay Dilla, he produced the song Love Is, sampling Marvin Gaye's God Is Love off of What's Going On from 1971, one of the greatest albums of all time. It feels like Dilla went, oh, you guys are doing 70s soul samples, huh? We'll watch this. Look how crazy this sample is. It's actually a sample from the B-side version, and Dilla's chopped up the sample to change the timing entirely. So this top track here is Marvin Gaye, God Is Love, B-side version. This is the part sampled. I've copied it down here. I've pitched it up one semitone, a half step, whatever you wanna call it. But if we were to play a straight beat all the way through that, here's what that would sound like. Right? But here's what Dilla did. Took this same section, I've just chopped it into two different parts to show you how it's arranged. So it's these two sections, the red section and the orange section, and then he's just playing them back and forth like this. But the trick is, he's playing with the timing. The original record's a little nebulous, and so he flips it around entirely. Check us out. I love this so much, that's incredible. To be able to hear that nebulous time like that and then go, oh wait, I know what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna shift the downbeat, that's crazy. Kanye was also a huge Dilla fan. I mean, who isn't? This is incredible. This album feels like Common's reset. He's coming out of the Soulquarians era, into the good music era, working with Kanye, putting these incredible 70s soul samples all over the album, featuring several different types of sampling, opening with that upright bass from Derek Hodge that expanded out to the sample, to sampling just the keyboard part for Go and mixing in John Mayer, or Dilla doing a genius sample flip on the holy grail of soul, Marvin Gaye. This is all the perfect underscoring for Common's rhymes. His storytelling and wordplay is incredible. The whole album just feels so warm and soulful. It's the perfect mix of the best stuff from Common's past, similar elements to other hip hop he loves, Soulquarian influence, The Last Poets, but he's working with a new producer, a new label, rolling all of this into something new and fresh that still holds up today. He's not trying too hard to be one thing or another. He knows who he is, what he does best, and who he wants to be. This album was nominated for four Grammys and became Common's second gold-selling album after Like Water for Chocolate. Common had worked with Jay Dilla on this album and he produced the hit song, The Light, which is a classic song, but that's not on this album. That's already in a different video. Click uh, over here to watch that. <laughs> 